Hi everyone, I'm Mark Eisenthal with you on this Saturday night. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Christmas vacation week. It just seems like this is the longest week ever. It's just going on and on and on as we get in towards New Year's. But I'll tell you what, I see an end to our boring weather pattern. You know, we haven't had a lot of snow in the last couple of weeks and hasn't been cold. But I think that's going to be coming to an end. All right, let's do this one first. I want to talk about Ray's New Garden Restaurant tonight. In need of at 8.30 with Jim and Cokie Golden for some karaoke. Come on down. And then they're there again New Year's Eve. We're having a karaoke special. Sing your heart out, kids. New Year's Eve with the one and only Ray at Raymond's in Needham. Ray's New Garden Restaurant. You know, I've been reading so much stuff on Google about the polar vortex and yada, da 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 and how this, all the extremes of the weather is because of CO2. It's just the biggest bunch of bullshit I've ever read. But that's all right. They've been writing some good stuff about stratospheric warming and what the polar vortex really means and about uh, El Nino and some good stuff. So there is some good stuff. But when they start writing about the fact that we've seen this weather is because of CO2, I want to take them out in the backyard and spank them. All right, soap opera over. Let's do the weather. Here we go. Let's get into this, okay? In blue, we do have a winter storm watch. In effect, for late tomorrow night, straight on through Tuesday morning, that looks to me, it's just right of the 128 belt, north and west, going down to Providence, to Hartford, all the way up through New Hampshire and uh, Vermont. So we're going to have to watch this very carefully. But let me just break down the details. Right now, we've got a nice little bubble of high pressure building in, and of course, on the cool side with northwest winds blowing in. So it will be a chilly night, not exceptionally cool. We're looking at low pressure off the map here, southwest of Missouri in this position. This is going to wind up moving up into the Great Lakes. And normally, when that happens, you think, gee, we're just going to get flooded with warm air. But this high is moving this way, and we're going to have lots of fun with cold high pressure in eastern Canada. There will be a new storm developing on the middle Atlantic coast during the next 36 hours. That's going to complicate things as well. As you look at the temperatures across the country, really not that cold. Uh, we got 30s and 40s in New England. We do have a chunk of colder air building up west of James Bay, and some of this is going to break away and move towards eastern Canada and be somewhat of a player here over the next couple of days. If you want it warm in South Florida, where Joanne Mills is singing, it's in the 70s down towards Miami Way, and they're having fun down there. All right, let's look at the dew points, because I want to show you this. A surge of 65-plus dew points coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, feeding the storm system. We get a lot of juice in the atmosphere. As a matter of fact, radar will show a pretty decent storm with low pressure coming out of the lower plain states, producing a large swath of snow on the northern Great Lakes, Minnesota, back through the Dakotas, Montana, Wyoming, and through Colorado. But notice the line of thunderstorms developing in this position through Oklahoma with low pressure over here. As we said, this low is going to wind up moving up into the Great Lakes. But all this moisture is going to come up the East Coast, and we do have some major problems. So let's get right to it. This is off the GFS map. And I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. This is off the NAM map. This is a prognostic map for um, Monday afternoon at 1 o'clock. So we have a primary low in the northern Great Lakes with a weather front and occluded front in this position coming into the Tennessee Valley. But notice the second storm now is getting organized in West Virginia with a warm front like this. Almost looks like there's a little breakaway low way out here. But here's the important thing. We have cold, high pressure in eastern Canada. This is 1 o'clock Monday afternoon. So we're going to have what we call cold air damming with the wind turning north, northeast, bringing low level cold air down the coast. This is very important because I think even though the upper levels or the mid levels of the atmosphere are going to start to warm, the cold in the low layers is going to hold. And that means sleet and freezing rain in the greater Boston area, just west of Boston for a good chunk of the storm from about uh, Monday morning through maybe Tuesday morning, although I do think it changes to rain in the city of Boston. Now, as we jump ahead to 8 o'clock Tuesday morning, I think the bulk of the storm is over. We have low pressure close to the Cape in this position. I think it's warm. It's rain. It's not warm, but it's warmed in Boston to Providence, the Cape Cod, where it's mostly rain. 495 is ice, and I think we have a mixture of snow, sleet, and freezing rain in southern New Hampshire and snow and ski country, where I think they're going to get a pretty decent slug of precipitation in the form of snow. And you're probably saying, okay, Mark, that's great, but what about New Year's Eve? We're fine for New Year's Eve. It's all cleared out. It's just windy and cold in the 20s. Now, I want to show you something interesting. This is off the European snowfall totals. Look at what they do. They've got big cojones here, kids. They're not kidding with this. They got the six-inch snow line, northern Worcester County, down to about Rockport, Gloucester. 
And north of that, a lot of snow. They say the Lakes region of New Hampshire gets 18 inches of snow with a foot of snow in southern New Hampshire. Do I believe that? Well, they've been doing this for the last several runs. But I want to tell you, just a day ago, they had 10 inches in Boston. They've lifted that north. But they're still very persistent with a lot of snow in the storm. And I can't rule that out. We're going to have to wait and see how the cold air holds. So I know I'm taking the wussy way out, but this is what I'm thinking in the immediate greater Boston area. I think we start as a mixture of snow, sleet, and rain, and we'll have some rain and sleet, and it could cover the ground for a while, then going to all rain. From 128 north and west in the ping zone, I think it's a major ice storm. Could be a couple of inches of snow going to ice. This is where I am very concerned about major league problems, limbs coming down, power outages, and all that good stuff. And once you move north of Route 2 to southern New Hampshire, northern portions of, well, actually, a good chunk of northern New England, let's put it like that, that's the most snow, six inches plus, and then they may have to deal with ice from Plymouth south, maybe a little mix, but then mostly a rain event. So let me come back to me so I can see you and just move this up like this and say, that's what I'm thinking. So breaking down the forecast tonight, we're talking clear, cold weather. It'll be in the 20s tomorrow, not bad. Outdoor plans are fine, a lot of sun. Then clouds increase during the afternoon, low 40s. Tomorrow night, I think we're just going to start as rain in Boston. And then as things get going, I think the rain's going to mix with and change to sleet, snow, and freezing rain. And we're going to have to... Uh, you know, delineate that line as the night goes on. And Monday morning, you wake up, the ground's covered in snow, even in Boston. Uh, the morning commute, if you're working, is not going to be fun. The further north and west of Boston you go, the harder it'll be snowing, and it could be seven inches. And we're going to be transitioning to ice and then rain in the greater Boston area. It's over before noon on Tuesday. And then, again, New Year's Eve is partial clearing, windy and cold in the 20s. Of course, we'll be here throughout tomorrow, and we'll keep you posted. All right, that's it. The soapbox weather the dissertation is over. Have a great, safe Saturday night, everyone. I'm Mark Rosenthal.